Once this was a mountain, the tallest in Oregon. Then fire and lava tore her apart, emptied her, leaving a crater six miles across and burying surrounding Indian villages in ash. Over centuries, rain and snow filled her with the purest blue water, making her the deepest, and many say the most beautiful, lake in America. For 8,000 years, Native Americans approached her only with the deepest awe and found spiritual power to guide their lives. When white settlers come, they come with visions of timber, grazing, resorts, and tourist attractions. It remains for one man, William Steele, to stop them and to save for all time the unique majesty of Crater Lake. Lobi Gaak Blai Yaina Blai Dalk Nihlao Chiasda. In the beginning was Mount Mazama. The stories Native Americans have told about this mountain and this lake for 77 centuries have been recorded in the late 1800s by Captain Oliver Applegate, son of pioneers of the Applegate Trail that passed through Klamath lands. Lao was chief of the down below world fire, smoke, and darkness in the middle of the earth, never lighted by the sun. Geologists like Howell Williams of the University of California at Berkeley tell a different story. For hundreds of millions of years, the ocean floor of the Pacific, called the Juan de Fuca Plate, has been creeping eastward and diving under the landmass of the Northwest. This movement has squeezed the magma, the subterranean liquid rock mass, upward, creating over the last 15 million years Cascade Mountains of Oregon, Washington, and Northern California. Mount Mazama was part of that mountain range. For millions of years, Mazama erupts with lava flows, flying rock, and ash falls. A cooling in the climate creates glaciers. When the glaciers leave, humans come to live there. In this time lived the Mukluks, the people before the Klamaths and Modocs. It was a peaceful land of forests and meadows, rivers and lakes, but for the smoldering mountain. The old chief's daughter, Loha, was fair as dawn and her voice was like the music of whispering waters. She was loved by the people for her daring and kindness. Lao, watching from Mount Masama, spied the beautiful maiden and desired her for his own. Lao approached her saying, come live with me in the middle of the earth. You shall have all the things you wish for. But Loha refused him and Lao grew angry and filled the land with rumbling. Fire burned in his eye. The morning light shines brilliantly on the ice around the summit of Mazama. Suddenly there's an ominous rumbling underground and a plume of steam rises from the crater. The slumbering volcano has awakened. The plume expands into a giant cloud shaped like a cauliflower and rises miles into the upper air. The chief sought the help of Skell, the god of the upper world, ruler of the sun, the forests, and the animals that live. Skell beheld the maiden, Loha, and adored her and vowed to battle in her defense. Enraged, Lao thundered and threw fire about for five days, then put on his robe of thick water smoke to hide himself. To put from sight the land of Mukluks he now hated. The climax comes suddenly. A glowing white hot avalanche of ash, dust, and gases surges from the volcano and races at speeds of 100 miles an hour through the surrounding valleys, mowing down forests and wiping out all life in its path. To end the ruin of her land, the maiden Loha offered herself as a sacrifice, but the holy man, who knew the will of the god, said no, and Lao complained to the great spirit, saying humans should not possess the secrets of the spirit world and know things to come before they happen, and Lao demanded the medicine men be sacrificed to him. The pyroclastic flows reach far into the Klamath Basin and Rogue and Umpqua Valleys 40 miles away. 
the huge magma chamber inside Mazama is emptied and the mountain can no longer support its own weight. The next day, the last day of Mount Mazama's life, with noises of terrifying intensity, the great mountain comes crashing down, leaving a great hole in the earth. The medicine men came to the edge of the opening and looked into the fiery eyes of Lao. Then they leapt, giving themselves to him as a sacrifice to appease him. Lao was vanquished and the mountain went crashing down. All that remained was a great hole in the earth. When the smoke begins to clear several days later, the majestic ice-clad peak that had dominated the landscape has disappeared. In its place is a stupendous cauldron, six miles across, 4,000 feet deep. Jets of steam hiss and roar from fissures. The new crater is unusual, with an even rim all around so no water can flow out, and so high no springs can flow in. Over a few centuries, rain and snow fill it, creating a deep, clear lake. When the sun arose next morning, the people saw Lao's mountain was gone. Snaith, the god of rain and storms, filled the hole with water, and peace had returned to the land. From the earliest days of contact with white settlers, the native people of southern Oregon don't talk about the huge crater filled with still blue water. On his journey to Crater Lake for the first time in 1885, William Gladstone Steele, the man who would preserve Crater Lake as a national park, visits the Klamath tribe. Long before the white man appeared in this region to vex and drive the proud native out, a band of Klamaths, while out hunting, came suddenly upon the lake and were startled and awed by its majestic proportions. Something within told them the great spirit dwelt there and they dare not remain. One brave was induced to return he went up to the very precipice and started his campfire. Here he slept till morn. Each visit bore a charm that drew him back again. He suddenly became hardier and stronger than any Indian of his tribe because of his many visits to the mysterious waters. Others then began to seek its influence. Old warriors sent their sons for strength and courage. William Steele. This tale, probably handed down for thousands of years, is what anthropologists call a vision quest a ritual where one withdraws into the wilderness to seek out the great spirit or spirits, asking for a vision to guide and empower their lives. In the late 19th century, the Bureau of Indian Affairs stamps out tribal religions. The vision quests become clandestine after the Klamath Lake Treaty of 1864. An article in the Overland Monthly Magazine in 1873 reads, The medicine men still came to Crater Lake as they always came in the olden time, to study spiritual wisdom and learn the secrets of the Great Spirit. In the solitude of these wilds, they listened to the winds that came from no one knew where, borne there